Good morning. Good morning. What a wonderful day to celebrate here together and worship, praising God. Um, so, a few things to let you know this week. We are, um, it's the start of fall break for both, all the schools around us. And so with that in mind, the uh, Christian Children's Fellowship on Monday will not be meeting. And um, there is no handbell rehearsal this week. However, the chancel choir, if you want to join, has decided to meet at five this Wednesday, and then we're going to go out to eat together. So if anybody would like to, or if you just want to come and go out to eat with us, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, today, as you know, is the fifth Sunday, and we are very pleased to have Patsy home with us today. Yep. She's got family here, and we are thrilled because we're going to be honoring her with Elder Emeritus today, as is well-deserved. So, thank you for being with us today. Um, we have a potluck. If you can stay, please stay there. I know there is plenty of food down there already, so we'd love to have everyone be a part of that. Next Sunday is World Communion Sunday. And that is um, October 6th. And that is both services we'll be celebrating. If you would like to bring some bread to share, we would love to have that. We're either going to do a display or we're going to cut it up and use it for the services. We're working on that. But we would love to have some different kinds of breads here representing different things. So if you would like to bring some bread to share, please do. Also next Sunday, it is Game Sunday, so if you want to stay after the second service and play games, we just bring sandwiches and light snacks and just eat and play board games. All, all ages are welcome to come. And bring your favorite games also. And also next Sunday, it's a busy Sunday next Sunday as well as today, it's Pet Blessing at 3 o'clock next Sunday. All pets are welcome. We encourage leashes or kennels. Um, and we will have treats and certificates. If you are bringing an animal other than a cat or dog, please let us know because we want to have a treat for them as well. So, um, grape juice. Thank you to everyone who contributed. Please don't bring any more <laughs> right now. Good job. Good job. <laughs> You've been very generous and we appreciate that. Thank you. We have plenty for now. And... Um, Remember to put your Seasons of Love minutes in. And also the Legacy event is coming up on October 10th. We need you to reserve your spot by this Tuesday, if possible. And let us know if you'll be able to come. Or if you're not able to join us, you, if you would like some information about what this means. So little, maybe you just want a little more laid back information instead of going to that but you are welcome to come. There are no obligations with coming. It's a free meal, and you'll just learn about what this means, so we'd love to have you there. Women's Retreat, we've got to get that registration in this week. If you are interested in going, it's at Barron River State Park, October 18th through the 20th. See me today, please. We've got to get that in. Anything else? All right, I think we've got all that we need to talk about today, and um, let us welcome the light of Christ being brought into our midst as we listen to our prelude. Thank you. 
Thank you, Miss Karen, as always. Mama P, that was almost as good as one of yours. <laughs> For the, the oaths, can please rise to our feet, please. As <clears throat> we are disciples of Christ, a movement for wholeness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let us join together in our opening hymn, please. Let us pray. God of majesty and power, may we find favor with you this day. Lift us from our daily preoccupations that we may pray with earnest intent to thank you and to be changed by you. May our worship be filled with life and be life changing. May the service we offer in your name find favor in your eyes. Hear us now as we lift our voices together and pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name.
forward, we have something important to do, and I'm going to ask, um, we're going to start it right now, and then we're going to ask Patsy to come down in just a moment, all right? We're going to be honoring our Elder Emeritus, Patsy Parrott. Life together in the body of Christ, like our individual lives, can often be at best understood as a series of events that helpfully respond to the past, occur in the present, and positively shape the future. These events, however, are never created, developed, or completed in isolation. Rather, life is always influenced by the presence and the power of God's Holy Spirit who leads, directs, challenges, and affirms the faith and experience of God's people. Today we are celebrating a significant event along the faith journey of this congregation and the greater church. It is the bestowing of the honor of Elder Emeritus upon Patsy Parrott. The scriptures teach us that each Christian is a minister and together we are the body of Christ in the Christian church. As such, we are called individually and collectively to Christ's ministry of reconciliation. While today we are honoring this person, we are also celebrating the common bond we each share amidst the priesthood of all believers. At this time, we're going to ask Patsy if she'll come forward, if her family wants to come with her, any of you, you're welcome to, or you can just send her on by herself. No. <laughs> I think we should also ask any of our elders who are present to come and join us as well. <laughs> yep, here, he's over there. He's here. He didn't leave you. The distinction of being named Elder Emeritus carries with it ongoing responsibilities. And you have to continue to support the spiritual life and development of the congregation and its leaders. You are to continue to be a spiritual example in accordance with scripture and leaders of this congregation. And this time, we claim you as one of the church's senior keepers of Christian faith. I love that, senior keepers of Christian faith and wisdom through whose experience and ministry we have inherited the church today. On behalf of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and our gracious God whom you have loved and served, it is my pleasure to present you a certificate of honor And an Elder Emeritus pen, which we'll let someone else pen on you in a minute here. We thank God for your ministry of dedicated service in the mission of Jesus Christ, for your life investment of witness to the larger community of God's people, and for your ongoing presence in this church family. Because of the example of your life, your professional service of ministry to and among us, your ongoing active ministry as a member of this congregation, and by the presence of God's spirit through this congregation's activity of love and gratitude demonstrated here today, we now declare you to be an elder emeritus of First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, in Bardstown, Kentucky. And so now, does this congregation heartily affirm this dedication and declaration. There you go. All right, good job, everybody. Okay. Let us pray, please. 
Almighty, most wonderful God, we do ask for continued prayers and the promise of steadfast love and the unity of your spirit. Together, we will seek to glorify God and serve Christ in a mission and ministry of love in this place and throughout all your creation. May the blessing and love of God be yours now and always as you continue to undertake the ministries you perform so well on our behalf. And through the empowering spirit of God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, hold on one minute. I'll Don't go anywhere, Brenda. I should have done this right before, but I'm going to do it right after. So I want to ask you, we can see up here, you've been a board president. You have been a instrumental in the CWF and president of CWF. You've, I'm sure you've taught Sunday school at some point in time many times, um, played piano, played handbells. You were playing handbells when we got here. And let's see, what probably sang in the choir at times. Sang in the choir. Um, helped with Vacation Bible School. Anybody else want to throw things in you know of? Raised lots of children here, as well as your own. Mama P., Helped with foster care kids. There you go. And, oh, hosted a big Christmas party every year at her house. There you go. Um, oh, CWF yard sale. It's all, see, it's just all popping up here. All of this that you have done and have built such a wonderful congregation with others. So thank you. And we're playing the handbells today. Because we got them refurbished this summer because of this lady taking care of that and making sure it happened. So, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, and now we're going to send the elders back and invite the children to come down. There you go. All right. I like your red shoes. Those are fun. Oh, here we go. That's okay. That's okay. So, well, oh, here he's coming. Okay, all right. Well, maybe. <laughs> so, we'll see. Question for you all. I want to ask, have you ever done anything that is brave? Anything brave? No? They don't know. Okay. Anybody else? Ever come ever do any something brave? It, it might be brave coming down here because it can be a little scary to sit in front of all these people, right? That might be a little brave, huh? Oh, oh what? Okay. Whenever I did ballet, I was on a stage and I was a little bit scared, but but then I um, got used to it. Well, that, that, was, that was being brave, getting up in front of all those people and dancing. That's right. How about anything else you've ever tried? Something that's you might think that you, had to, you were a little scared at first? And well, I'm going to talk to them later today about someone in the Bible named Queen Esther. And she had to be very brave because she was trying to save her life and the life of all of her people because someone was going to kill them. And so she had to be very brave and smart to save them. And that's something, I don't think we have to be brave and save somebody's life, but sometimes we have to to speak up if we see something that's wrong, don't we? If we... We know something's wrong that we need to say, 
so that somebody doesn't get hurt or they don't hurt someone else, right? Yeah. So sometimes it can be hard to be brave, but sometimes we have to do the right thing, which means being a little brave. All right, let's stand up together and have our prayer. Dear God, we thank you for Jesus. Dear God, we thank you for the children. Amen. Thank you all. And if you'd like, you can go to Worship and Wonder. All right. As we come to a time of offering uh, today, uh, we're so very thankful to have uh, so many among us who have great examples of giving through their lives. Mama P is someone we're raising up today, but we could go down the roads and talk about everybody and what folks have given in, in their time and in their service and through their finances and through the gifts that God has given them and how they have shared uh, through the years or if younger, just beginning to share. We all have something that we can give. We all have something that we can share from God. Sometimes we feel like it's not enough or maybe not good enough or it doesn't matter, and none of that is true. What we have to offer in our finances, whether it's $5, $50, 5000 whatever, in our time, whether it's a minute, an hour, a day, a week, whatever we can afford to give, it is worth the giving to make a difference in the lives of others and to do the will of God, to love God and to love our neighbor. Let's please bow our head for a prayer dedication. Almighty and most wonderful God, we do dedicate everything that has been given this day, these tithes, 10%, givings, love offerings, sacrificial gifts, and we dedicate them to the building of your kingdom here upon this, your earth. Lord, may all we do, say, thank, and give be a glory to you, a praise in your name. Help us to remember that we own nothing, we come into the world with nothing, and we will leave with nothing, and all that we have is yours. May we truly be good stewards and share of your abundance. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. If you have a joy or concern to share in prayer today, a number you can text up on the screen uh, and let us know of your joy or concern. And uh, let's prepare ourselves for our time of prayer together by singing our prayer hymn.
as we come to our time of prayer together, have those who want to raise up in prayer. We do have a prayer list available here, and uh, we can send one to you online if you're watching from home as well. Uh, we do have some praises to share today. Uh, Kim S., who is studying hard uh, to pass the CDL test for his new job, passed his test this week. Worked very hard on that, so yeah. <laughs> Studied hard and, and worked through some learning concerns and did a good job. Also, we have a granddaughter of Ms. Sheila's, who, Michaela G., who finished her master's degree in social work. Another, there you go. Another praise on that one today. Okay. Uh, we do have some folks uh, to share uh, that have some concerns and ask you to keep these folks in your prayers. We want to keep uh, Gwen L., who's seven years old, and her parents, as she has been diagnosed with a brain tumor, friend of Michael C.'s. Want to remember uh, Lois June. P, who's in the hospital, sister, I'm sorry, what? No, nothing? Okay. Uh, a uh, sister of Margie B. Want to keep our regional minister, Dr. Don G, as he's traveling to Guyana on a mission trip, so keep him in your prayers. Also, uh, keep those who are recovering from Hurricane uh, Helena, uh, and I do have some things to tell you. Go ahead. So I'm going to share those updates with you. We have several. Um, one is I was asked about Christ Mount, which is our national campground in North Carolina. It's in Black, on Black Mountain, which you may have seen in the news has been devastated. Um, they have the, the big, most report they've gotten so far is they have two bridges out and there is water in the dining hall and one of the other main buildings. But they, they're sure they've sustained more damage than that. Um, also a lot of Western North Carolina. Also Rose just texted me that her hometown in Georgia has been devastated by the hurricane as well. Her parents and sister are physically okay. Their homes have limited damage but they may not have electricity for at least two weeks now. Yeah. And Reverend Lana, who is a pastor in Jacksonville, just got her lights back on. I know my sister and her family up in Lexington were supposed to get their lights on at 10.30 last night. Hopefully they did. Um, just all of, I'm sure several of you have had family and friends in Florida and other places that have sustained major damage and are still suffering with all of that. So just um, want to keep all of those in our prayers. If we hear more that we need to share, we will let you know as we hear that. So, Thank you, dear. Appreciate that. Uh, we also uh, need to keep in our prayer prayers, the family of Linda C. and Mary, who lost loved ones this week, uh, friends of Lisa Q's. We need to keep the family of Ronald W., who passed away this last week, uh, and keep their family in prayers, a friend of Scott L., as well as those unspoken requests out there today. Let's please bow our heads for a prayer as a community of faith at this time. Almighty and most wonderful God, we are truly, truly a people that are in awe of you. You create the universe, the very air we breathe, the planet we are upon and so many galaxies far beyond that we cannot even see or understand. And yet you care about each and every one of us and you hear our prayers. We ask that you will hear our prayers this day, dear Lord, as we lift up those who have done accomplishments, 
as we raise up those who know loss during these times, those that are ill and struggling. You pray for our regional minister and all are with him in Guyana. We pray for those affected by the hurricane in so many different ways, dear Lord. And pray that in the days that are to come that we will be your ministers to reach out, to care, to love, and to help those who are in distress. We ask, dear Lord, that you will continue to guide us as your community of faith. Continue to inspire us, to lead us, to rejuvenate us through the power of your Holy Spirit, that we will know that what we do is truly your will as we walk in your way. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
Queen Esther. We're going to save our scripture and read it a little later in the sermon because we're going to learn a little about Queen Esther first. And she is one of only two books in the Bible named after women. Esther and Ruth, both found in the Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures. Esther and Ruth were books which would have been the scriptures Jesus read from as a young Jewish boy. Another interesting fact shared by Esther in the Song of Solomon is that neither specifically mentions God in the book. If you want to take time later, it's, Esther is only 10 chapters long. You can read through it. God is not mentioned, but it doesn't mean God is not present in the story, guiding and moving along with the people. So before we get to our scripture, I'm going to tell you the story of Esther so we all know what's going on before chapter 7. It starts with the story of King Ahasuerus, who was king over 127 provinces from India to Ethiopia. In the third year of his reign, he decides to show off his great wealth, and they describe it. It's very lavish with white and blue hangings and marble and crystals and all this other very lavish splendor. He shows it off for six months. He lets people come and see how wonderful, how wealthy he is. After that, he gives a great banquet in the citadel of Susa, the capital, for all people, great and small. A lavish banquet with no restraint for seven days. All the officials could eat and drink as much as they wanted while the women of the palace were being entertained by his queen, Vashti. On the seventh day of the banquet, we are told the king was merry with drink. I think we all know what that means, don't we? Seven days of unrestrained drinking. In some, if you read some translations, they talk about filling flagons. Flagons were actually pitchers. Okay, they weren't just a goblet. Pitchers of alcohol. Anyway, he sent his seven eunuchs. If you're not sure what a eunuch is, ask me later. I will tell you. He sent his seven eunuchs to bring the queen to show off her great beauty before all the men. He wants to show her off. It says she should wear her crown. It doesn't mention anything else. I don't know. But she refused to come. I am not going to be shown off in front of a bunch of men. No. Here's the problem. That was unheard of at that time. You didn't refuse the king. And you didn't refuse your husband. If he said you do this, you do this. But especially a king. And the king is angry, but the men are scared. They are afraid because of her defiance, it might spread to their wives. I mean, what if their wives said, no, I'm not going to do that today? Mm -mm. They didn't like the idea of women saying no or having any control. So they did what they could to put her in her place. The king said, what can I do about this? And the sages, his... his um, people who were giving him wisdom, supposedly, said, put her aside. Tell her she can never come before you again. And send out a decree that all men are masters in their homes and women must obey them. This story doesn't start well for women, does it? I'm going to tell you, it doesn't get much better for a while. So the king sages then encouraged him to find a new queen. And the best way to do that was to send out to all these 127 provinces and bring the most beautiful young virgins to the palace for beauty treatments. And then, after a year of that, he would choose one. Now, let me tell you, in the area was a fair young woman 
Esther, whose parents had died, and she was adopted by her uncle Mordecai, who was Jewish and had come to the area as a prisoner of, during the Babylonian Wars. So Esther, as a beautiful young woman, is taken into the harem of the king. However, Mordecai warned her before she went, do not mention who your people are. Do not identify yourself as a Jewess. Well, once she's inside the harem, Mordecai would walk outside the gates and ask around to make sure she was doing well. She quickly found favor with Haggai, the eunuch in charge of this harem, and he cared for her and advanced her to the best place. Esther, with all the other young women, was given 12 months of beauty treatments, which are described as six months with oil of myrrh, followed by six months with perfumes and cosmetics. After a young woman completed her year of beauty treatments, she was taken at night to the king, and in the morning she left and went into the second harem of concubines. She never saw the king again unless he specifically called for her by name. To me, this story is just getting worse. It is not getting better. It's made to sound like it is quite an honor, but these women weren't asked if they would like to leave their homes and villages. They weren't asked if they would like to go into the harem of the king. And once they went into the harem of the king, they weren't free to leave just one night with the king and off to the other part of the harem where they might get called upon again, but they might not. And there they lived. We are told in chapter 2 that everyone admired Esther. And when she was called to the king's chambers, she won his favor and he loved her more than the others. So much so that he put the queen's crown upon her head and made Esther his queen. Now, at least for Esther, things seem to be a little better. Now, during this time, Mordecai overheard a plot to kill the king, and he passed it on to Esther, who told the king in the name of Mordecai, it was investigated, the king was safe, and the men were executed. There was also a man who shows up, whose name is Haman. He was favored by the king, and he was put in a high position of authority. And as such, everyone should bow to him, except Mordecai refused. And Haman despised Mordecai, and he planned to get revenge by having all of Mordecai's people, the Jews, killed. And so he told the king, there's a group of people in your provinces who are not following your laws. They should be killed. Haman offered to even put money into the treasury to help with this. And so the king signed a decree that on a certain day, all the Jews would be killed, men, women, and children. Mordecai grieved because he knew the decree was being sent out and his people would soon be annihilated from this area. He sent a message to Esther asking her to intervene. Now, you would think a queen who has found such favor with a king could easily do that. But Esther was scared because she knew it was not legal for anyone, even the queen, to approach the king without first being summoned by the king. If she did that and he didn't like it, she would be put to death. The only way you could approach without being summoned was if he pointed his gold scepter at you and welcomed you into the throne room. Mordecai reminded her that as a Jew, she would eventually be killed as well with this edict in place. So Esther thought about it, and she came up with a plan. Notice here, Esther knows she can't just outright ask the king because he has listened to Haman and he's already set out to kill her people. So she has to have a plan. She has to be brave 
and she has to be smarter than the men who have planned all of this. So the first thing she does is bravely approach the king. Can you imagine standing in that doorway thinking, oh, please. But he sees her, and he points the golden scepter at her and says, come in. And she says, I have something to ask of you. And he says, I'll give you anything you want, up to half of my kingdom. Esther, Esther says, first, I would like to prepare a banquet for you and for Haman. Hmm. He says, that would be wonderful. Well, meanwhile, Haman and his wife are discussing how he should just go ahead and kill Mordecai. And they plot to kill him, and they even put up gallows for this purpose, to hang him. But the night before the banquet, the king can't sleep. He's tired, he's bored, so he has someone bring in the book of records, things that have happened in the past, and, and read to him. In it, he is reminded of how this man Mordecai saved his life. And the king did nothing for him. Well, pretty soon, Haman comes into the palace to talk to the king, if he can. And the king hears of it, and he sends for Haman, and he says, Come here. What should I do for someone that I would like to honor, who means a lot to me, and I, I would like to honor them? Haman assumes the king means himself, and he says, Well, I think if you really want to honor someone, Give them some of the robes that you have worn to put on them. And then one of your horses that you have ridden, that person should be put on the horse and then paraded through the streets so everyone will know this man has your favor. The king says, what a wonderful idea. I want you to do that for Mordecai. <laughs> yeah. Haman's big ideas are going down the tubes. He has to get Mordecai, bring him in, put the king's robes on him, put him on one of the king's horses, and lead him through the streets and declare how he is favored by the king. When he gets home, his wife rightly predicts that all of this Haman has planned will soon fall before Mordecai. Now we're going to hear the rest of the story as found in our scripture reading, Esther chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, 9 through 10, and then a little bit from chapter 9. So the king and Haman went into feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the, queen, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given to me. That is my petition, and the lives of my people... That is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed, to be killed, to be annihilated. If we have been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace. But no enemy can compensate for this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, Who is he and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, A foe and an enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Now, I actually added a little more in. Just hold on to that part there. The king rose from the feast in wrath and went into the palace garden, but Haman stayed to beg his life from the queen, for he saw the king had determined to destroy him. When the king returned from the palace garden to the banquet hall, Haman had thrown himself on the couch where Esther was reclining, and the king said, Will he even violate the queen in my presence, in my own house? As the words left the mouth of the king, they covered Haman's face. Then Harbona, 
One of the eunuchs in attendance on the king said, look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose words saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, hang him on that. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Now we move ahead a little. Mordecai recorded all these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month of Adar and also the 15th day of the same month year by year that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. As you can tell, it's 10 chapters long. There's a lot more to this story than what I've shared today. But this story is the start of the Jewish festival of Purim. It is celebrated each year, as it's said, on the 14th day of Adar, the second month of the Hebrew calendar, often falling during February, March on our calendar. The ritual observance of Purim actually begins with a day of fasting called Ta Anit Esther, or the Fast of Esther, on Adar 13. In the synagogue service, the book of Esther is read. The people are encouraged to exchange gifts and to make donations to the poor. Purim is teeming with festivities. It's considered one of the most jubilant holidays on the Jewish calendar. And it is celebrated because of Queen Esther. She was a woman in a very difficult situation. Had she not been brave enough and clever enough, all of her people would have been killed. She stepped into that king's throne room when she knew she could die for doing that. She didn't come right out and ask him to save her people. Instead, she had a plan, and she used it to make a difference. I find it interesting that part of this joyous celebration is not just having parties for themselves and giving gifts to their friends and family, but making donations to the poor. Perhaps it's a lesson we might all learn as we celebrate our own holidays, that we remember not just our family and friends, but those who cannot afford to celebrate as we do. Maybe Esther calls us to step out in bravery as well, to step out of our comfort zones, to speak up when we see or hear an injustice, speak up when we see others are not being treated fairly, to share what we have with those who have less. In this world of darkness and division, May we speak up for justice, fairness, and equality for all people. May we help others live lives of peace. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for the story of Esther, of her bravery, of her devotion to you and to helping her people. Help us, oh God, to be brave in our faithful service to you. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. We offer an invitation each Sunday to any who have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives to make that good confession of faith today. But we also come to a time as we prepare to gather around the table of our Lord. We come to a time when we share in communion together. This table is one of fairness and equality, for it is open to all people. There are no distinctions made at the Lord's table. And so we welcome all to come forward to receive the elements and to remember the sacrifice of Christ for each of us. I invite you to stand as you're able and sing our hymn of communion.
special day for me to serve here with Patsy out here. Bow our heads for prayer. We pray for peace and a world of calm in our lives. We turn to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your guidance in this endeavor. Our earth is full of turmoil and unrest as we come to seek your guidance for our part to contribute to loving peace in this world. The communion table is our focal point today. Bless all those that find themselves in distress from the many problems of life, like rains, floods, sickness, war, that they may find peace in communion with you. Accept our prayers, Lord, and Father of the universe. In thy name we pray. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
invite you to stand as you're able for our benediction and response as our acolytes come forward and prepare to lead us out with the light of Christ. I also want to say thank you to Mary, who is getting us, she's probably already helping us potluck, she's getting us back on the green pathway here. You might have noticed our glasses were glass today for communion, so um, she and her husband have worked on finding, come on down, you're good, on finding a way to uh, wash those in the church dishwasher, and so we appreciate that, and it's a little, little better for the planet, hopefully. Thank you, boys. Don't forget to go down for the potluck. There is cake. Just wanted you to know. Uh, that makes it worth it. And you get to probably give a hug or a fist bump to uh, Mama P. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with each of us today and forever. Amen. Thank you.